Welcome to Artistic Adventures. In this video, we're going to continue our Elizabeth the First Doll project, and we're going to have a wig adventure, and I do mean adventure, because I'm going to show you how to carry on when everything goes wrong. <laughs> Let's get started. So we started off with this doll that has uh, the wig cap, and I, I showed you this previously before we did the face up. And when you take the wig cap off, you have this plastic thing and that I took the uh, purple color off with some acetone and then glued the uh, alpaca fiber to. Now let's look at some uh, pictures of Elizabeth from uh, paintings. And uh, you'll see that mostly she just has these like curly mass on top of her head and maybe a few tendrils coming down the back. And uh, it's pretty consistent in most of her pictures. So... We're going to try some semblance of that. I also like this picture of Kate Blanchett uh, from the, her movie playing Queen Elizabeth. And you'll see the, the doll ends up looking kind of more like that than anything. All right, so here's our wig cap. And uh, I did do a couple of things that I want to show you. First of all, at the front of the wig, because I felt that that was going to be turned up, I put a row of the fiber on the inside glued it to the inside so that when it's flipped up you don't see the edge of the wig cap. So that's the front part and then this back part I did not put a row of the fiber down inside because I didn't think that would show the hair in the back is going to hang down over that. Okay so we have um, basically I just wrote, uh, glued sections of the alpaca fiber to this in uh, in sort of layers starting at the bottom and going up and then I, I have this one piece here that actually goes through the middle. I usually do this if the doll is going to have a part. Um, not really sure how this wig's going to turn out so I did it anyway. So that piece goes through to the inside and is glued. I just cut a hole in the plastic. You can see that tag there is where I pulled the fiber through and glued it. So we have this kind of um, I mean, it is kind of a reddish brown color, but I want to make it more red. So I bought this Feria uh, color, which is supposed to be bright copper, <laughs> power copper, I think it says. So I uh, felt like that would brighten it up. Now, um, here's the first adventure. First of all, I just colored my own hair with a Feria product like this in rose gold, and it worked really well. So I, that's why I bought this copper. And but it didn't have the same amount of bottles and tubes. It had less bottles and tubes. So I was kind of, I, you know, I've colored my hair many times and I kind of know like you have the big bottle. That's the, you know, the one that you shake. And then this right here is actually a conditioner. So I did put that one aside. Now here's where I made the mistake. Hindsight is twenty twenty. This is shampoo. <laughs> I start putting the shampoo in and then I'm reading it. I'm like, oh no, that's shampoo. They never give you shampoo. That's not like it was in the other feria that I bought. So I just, you know, I, I'm going to keep going here. I, I put all the other ingredients, the color booster, the oil, and the uh, stimulant or whatever it is in that darker bottle and shook it up. And I was like, you know what? If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. It'll just be clean hair with maybe some red in it but I didn't you know I didn't want to have to go out and buy a whole new thing so I just went ahead and squirted it all over there hoping I saturated it really good <laughs> you know this is the adventure and while we're waiting on that to cook <laughs> I want to show you this I just made for the church Christmas bazaar you know I'm already into that yeah I'm making things for that it's like a little nativity scene made out of popsicle sticks or tongue depressors let me know what you think of this in the comments because I'm, I'm trying to decide if this is a good idea. I just thought it was something kind of cute and simple that people might buy for not very much money. So help me out with your opinion. All right, so as you can see, the adventure was okay. We, we uh, washed all that color out and dried it, and it actually turned into a really pretty color. I'm really happy with that. I kind of want to dye my hair this color. Of course, probably wouldn't look that good on me. But anyway, um, so you can use uh, human hair dyes on the alpaca fiber. And if you make a mistake, just keep going. It'll probably be okay. 
Now, here's the thing with this doll. The curly curls in the front of Elizabeth's hair, I, I'm thinking about it in two ways. First of all, I'm thinking about doing rows of curls that I can pull back over the top of her head like this. Just curl it really tight and put those all across the front. So that was my first thought, okay? And uh, I have this little one fourth inch curling iron. This is smaller than the one that I normally use. If you're interested, I'll put a link to uh, where I bought it on Amazon in the description box. It's really nice for dolls. It, it you know, it's, it's a nice small, I guess it's about the smallest they make. So I start um, going across the front and I pull down that section that I had glued underneath the doll cap. And so now I'm just gonna start curling across the front and I did also right now I'm actually curling the back because part of this is going to hang down and I don't know how much at this point I will keep in terms of it hanging down and how much I may have to cut some to pile it up on top of her head for that curly look that she has and also having to keep in mind that I do plan to put some sort of headpiece on her. She wears sometimes one that's sort of like a triangular piece that the point comes down in the front and maybe has a pearl drop or she could have a crown or I'm not sure. Anyway, she will have some sort of headpiece so I have to remember that when I'm working on the hair because that's going to sit on top of all of this. So you have to keep all these things in mind as you're as you're working on a doll. So you know I kind of take the uh, beautician approach to to doll wigs uh, it's never simple for me <laughs> this is like you know doing a real uh, person's hair in in that century <laughs> and uh, so the problem is that you you're working on a, a tiny size but you're using human size implements like the curling iron or or bob pins or or whatever so it, it's really challenging and uh, the thing that is challenging for Elizabeth especially is if you look at those pictures, those curls that she that are in the pictures are very, very small. So in, I guess, in a ratio of comparison, this is just not the same. These curls are huge, even though they're, they're small by our, our measures. You know, one-fourth inch curling iron is very, very small. And if you were just trying to create a sort of, you know, curvy, doll hair look it'd be perfect and I highly recommend this this size uh, for that so right now what I'm doing is I'm curling those tendrils that will hang down on the front I'm being sustained by my iced tea there in the back I hadn't gotten into the later day yet so no wine <laughs> but anyway um, <clears throat> excuse me i um, just curling these sections down and making sure that they're really curled and then I'm going to go across and pull them back and see if I can create a look that is not quite the curly curls, but it's enough that it's reminiscent and will give us the illusion of Queen Elizabeth. Because that's a lot of what I do. You know, it's not always possible to be completely accurate as long as the illusion is there for the doll. You know, of course you can't always make their face look exactly like the face, so... All right, um, here we go. We're going to start pulling these back, and I'm just clipping them back as I twist them to make sure they're nice and cur curled. Now, about halfway through this is where the second adventure happened. I'll say, I'm going to say adventure. It's an adventure. It's not a mess up. I, I noticed that uh, there's a gap between where those curls are being pulled up and the next section of hair back on the head. So um, that's it was it would show through. Now you can see that gap there where the wig cap is showing through right there. Yeah. So that was showing through the curls. So that's not going to work. So I thought, well, what I can do is take a section of the hair behind that and pull it over like that and then glue it down so that it's closer to the edge so that's what I'm I'm going to try to do next to 
get past this adventure. So I'm going to use my trusty E6000 and just put a line of that on the wig cap part. Not too much because I don't want it to come through because it will make it, you know, it will make it hard, uh, firm. So anyway, um, after I pull that down, I'm going to take my uh, next step of iced tea. <laughs> I'm having a really hard time with this. You guys have no idea. This took all day. All right. And then I'm going to take the rat tail of this comb and pull a section of the hair behind it on top of that tail and then pull it forward and press it down into the glue. See what I'm doing? Like that. And then I'm just going to hold it for a few minutes and let it and let it dry and this is how it turned out it turned out great so you can see it glued it down very close to the edge so there's no gap awesome second adventure hurdle covered all right so now I go back and I say this is gonna work right I'm not gonna have that gap so I can pull these curls back which is going to alleviate my need for teeny tiny curls and I'll have my illusion all right so going back we're just going to pull those up and i'm showing you this because you know i end up not thinking this worked but this is kind of a cute hairstyle so if you want to do this for another doll you know just for a nice interesting hairstyle why not it's pretty it just after i did it i said you know what it's just not queen elizabeth it's just not going to work so, back to the drawing board. I did try curling it a little bit more, and then I thought, well, maybe if I make the, the top part shorter, then I could curl, I could get these curls to sort of mix in with the curls. So, I decided to cut off sections of the top hair to about two inches and then I left the bottom part long so that could be the tendrils that come down in the back all right so you can see there the length and you can see me still pondering this <laughs> this whole situation I'm just not happy this is just not going the way I thought it would Marie's wig went so well I just it just went boo boo and it was you know in shape this one is not doing anything I want now I'm using hairspray on the tendril on the uh, curls because the alpaca fiber is very soft and unlike the wool that I used for Marie's wig uh, this doesn't hold curl very well unless you put some hairspray on it so um, if you put hairspray on it it does hold a lot better and then you can spray it afterwards and I always pull the curl off I don't unroll it because keeping it in the roll situation until it cools also helps the curls stay in place all right so I'm just curling right now I'm curling all of that top part and hoping that I can maybe take those long tendrils in the front pull them back and sort of weave them into the curls on the top and it will give me the look that I want does anybody think that's going to happen <laughs> Yeah, it, it didn't. But hang in there with me. We're going to get there. Because you know from the thumbnail picture that it ended up being okay. But it certainly didn't turn out the way I thought it would initially. And uh, I did have a couple of tries at different things. But that's, that's why it's the adventure. All right, so got that all curled on the top. And then I just, I was trying to think, okay, how can I, how can I work this in? Maybe, you know, spreading out the curls and then pushing those others into it. And I just am realizing that it's just not going to work. So, ah, as much as I hated to do it, because I'm really in love with this red color, this beautiful red fiber, I'm just going to have to cut that front part. And it really, I was like, no, yeah, no, okay, I'm going to cut it. Ooh, there it is beautiful red curls gone 
Oh, well. And then, so my next thought is, all right, let's, let's just really spray this, get it nice and stick, stiff, and then we'll, we'll curl it, and maybe it'll be small enough that it will look like Elizabeth's hair did. Now, as I finish this up, one of the things that I wanted to try to do was uh, part of the, I think, recognizable part about Elizabeth is she kind of has this higher forehead and her hair is kind of uh, curled up at that level. Not It doesn't hang down over her forehead, in other words. And unfortunately, the shape of this wig cap and the restraints that I have of, you know, only being able to curl it so small with this curling iron, it makes it so that it sort of hangs down into her eyebrows and over the forehead, which is not the look of Elizabeth. And if you watch to the movies, she actually, in the movies, uh, they said that she cut her hair short and then she wore wigs. So I think that part of the, the fact that her hair is styled the way it is is possibly that it, it was a wig so this is just uh, as you can see it's hanging down really over her face with the curls it's just not working the curls are not small enough I'm getting really frustrated I've been doing this pretty much the entire day on Saturday and I've drank about mm, five or six glasses of iced tea I'm almost ready to move on to the wine at this point. I am so frustrated. I mean, it's pretty. Don't get me wrong. It looks pretty. I mean, it's nice little curls and the color red is beautiful. But if you look at that face right there, that's not Queen Elizabeth. That's somebody else with pretty curls hanging down in their face. So I started thinking about ways I could pull the curls up and make it a little bit higher on her forehead. So um, what I decided to do is take a strand of hair from the side so I could pull this back. And I don't have to worry about the cap shine, you know, because I have those fibers glued underneath. So I'm just going to take this piece from the side and use it kind of like a headband to pull the hair back. Now that can still pull the curls down over this, but it won't hang as low on her forehead. And then I can take a uh, just a regular sewing pin and wrap that strand around it in the back and pin it into her head to hold it. So what's the solution to the smaller curls? There's adventure number three, four, I can't remember, there were so many. I used pipe cleaners and cut them in little sections and you know how you have those uh, foam curlers that you, you wrap and then you twist them together at the top and sleep on them? That's what I did. Cut them in little pieces, wrapped small sections of the hair and rolled it around it and then twisted it together to hold it. I left it overnight. We're now into Sunday. <laughs> and this seems to have worked pretty well to get me much smaller curls. I did blow the hair dryer on it a little bit to give it some heat and help set it. And as you know, I'd already put a lot of uh, hairspray on it, so I think the setting power is there. I didn't have to put any more at this point. I did spray some at the end when I, I felt like I was finished with, with the style. So basically just curled all of that small part at the top and got those little uh, smaller kinky looking curls that seem to go along with the picture, especially the one uh, of Kate Blanchett. I think it really, really turned out a whole lot like that, that wig, or I don't think that was her real hair. All right, so now I'm just taking the tail of the comb and separating the curls to make them smaller and fluffier and just spread them out a little bit. And that's given me the look that I want. And then I'm going to redo that hair piece that I, I took down when I did the curls. And just pinning it to the back of her head. 
And then the rest is just uh, moving the curls around with my fingers till I got them in the position that I wanted. I did pull the back hair around to the side, but you see how that sort of pulled it up on her face. And uh, I won't show you the 20 minutes that I spent just messing it up with my fingers. So this is how it turned out. And I think that looks a whole lot more like Queen Elizabeth. And um, just pulled that long part to the side. I may change that a little bit because we really still have the dress to do. And I'll probably just pop this wig off while we're working on the dress. So we may have some few finishing touches as we get to the end of the series. But for now, I think we overcame our obstacles and the wig adventure is finished. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned some ways to deal with problems that you come across. Don't ever give up. Just, just keep going. There's always a creative solution in there somehow. So uh, just keep watching. We've got more of Elizabeth coming up. And make sure and subscribe if you haven't already because I don't want you to miss a thing, right? Thanks and bye.